Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how a scale change affects a set of data. Now, in a previous video, we looked at translations. We talked about how if we added a particular number to each value in a data set, what that would mean is that the mean, the median, and the mode would all also be added by that particular value. However, the, and those would be the measures of center. The measures of spread, like the variance, the uh, range, or interquartile range, or standard deviations, all of those pieces would end up remaining the same. And that's if we added a number to each value in the data set. Now, we talked in a previous video, we talked about a new ty type of transformation, and that would be a scale change. And in this video, we're going to be seeing now how a scale change affects each of the numbers in it, or each of those statistical uh, measurements if we multiply a number by each value in our data set. But to start out with, we're going to be looking at what we call CPI. CPI is called the Consumer Price Index. And what that does is that um, adjusts a price um, on inflation. So if we want to figure out, like let's say a uh, loaf of bread costs you know, 50 cents back in 1975. How much would that same type of loaf of bread, how much would that same type, type of bread cost, to now, uh, cost today? Um, to do that, we would use what's called the Consumer Price Index. So let's look at a story problem involving Consumer Price Index, and it'll help introduce this whole idea of how a scale change affects a set of data. So here it says, suppose a refrigerator costs $800 in 1995. What might you expect the cost of a similar refrigerator to be in June of 2008. Now over here on the right they have our um, CPI values for different years starting with 1950. Um, for every five years they give us that data. Now the key here is in this last sentence. In order for us to be able to figure this out we're going to solve a proportion. Now recall that a proportion basically is two ratios set equal to each other. In other words we're going to have two fractions being equal to each other. Well, it's important that we recognize where we're getting these numbers and what these fractions are representing. So we're going to start out with our first fractions. This can represent the cost. So we'll have a ratio comparing our cost. We have another ratio comparing our uh, consumer price index, or CPI. Now, it's important that we set this up correctly for when we start to talk about a scale factor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put our most recent information in the numerator. So we're going to use the information that we have from June of 2008 in the numerator, and we're going to use information from 1995 in our denominator. So now let's put the numbers in this ratio. So we don't know the cost of the refrigerator in June of 2008. That's what we're trying to find out. But we know that this refrigerator costs $800 in 1995. And we can look over here. What I highlighted for our CPI, that in June of 2008, our CPI is 655.5. And in 1995, our CPI is 456.5. So now to find our value for x, we're just going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the pieces that are diagonally across from each other. So the x and the 456.5, we multiply those two values together. And when you do that, we just get... 456.5x equals, and now we're going to multiply the 800 times the 655.5. And when we do that, we get 524,400. So to figure out what our value for x equals, I'm just going to take the 524,400 divided by 456.5, and I'm going to round this. Technically, we get $1,148.74. Granted, this is going to be an estimation. It's not going to be exact. Um, so since we're de dealing with the refrigerator that originally cost $800, I'm just going to round this to $1,150. So I can estimate that that refrigerator and $800 is a similar one. Now granted, there's going to be more technology that uh, is gonna, uh, might be changed, so it won't be exactly the same. But a similar refrigerator would cost $1,150 in, in 2008 versus 1995. So if I were to take this 655.5 divided by 456.5, that's going to end up giving me my scale factor. When you do that, you end up getting 1.436. Now, what that means is that's a 43.6% increase in prices. We would not say it's 143.6%. Basically, the 100% is representing what we had originally. 
So you can look at that and see that you would add another 43.6%. So that is what your, um, the value is increased by. Now we could refer to this as a scale change. So we're multiplying our x value in this case by whatever our uh, scale factor is. We'll refer to that scale factor as our value for a. And when you do that, we could end up getting an equation. So here down, I have s of x equals 1.436 times x. This would be an equation I could use to estimate the price in 2008 of any item if I knew the price in uh, 1995. So in 1995, if I knew how much a loaf of bread would cost, I could put that in here for x, and that would give me an estimate of what I would expect to pay in June of 2008. Or if I knew how much a gallon of gas was in 1995, I would take 1.36 times uh, that value, or whatever the gas price would be, to estimate what the price would be in the year 2008. Well, that's what we're going to be doing in this next activity. So why don't you guys get out your TI Inspires, and we're going to use those to follow along in this activity. So here they give us the, um, some different um, items, some grocery items, and their prices in the year 1998. And we know that the CPI in 1998, they give that to us right here, is about 496. So we're going to use this information to um, figure out the mean, the median, the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. So if you don't have my notes printed out, why don't you go ahead and pause the video right now and just copy this table so you'll have it when we need it. And then that way, then we can go on to the next step. So go ahead, pause the video, hit play when you go on to the next step. Okay, so let's do this now. So we're gonna, first off, we're gonna go to step one. We're gonna calculate the scale factor needed to predict the cost of items in 2008 from 1998 prices. So remember to do this, we're going to always start with our most recent information. So in 2008, we know our CPI from the front page is 655.5. And from up here, we can see that our CPI is 496. And if you divide these, we're going to get approximately 1.322. So we're going to use this as our scale factor. And I'll show you how to use that in a second. So why don't you guys now get out your calculators. And go to a spreadsheet. And in this first column, type in old for our original set of data from 1998. And then type in the numbers that we've got in the table. So we have 1.4.03, one one point one 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 1.1.3, 1.6, 1.82, and 1.02. So go ahead and plug those numbers in if you need to. You can pause the video. And then go back up to column B, and we're going to call this our new prices. So we'll just type in new. So this would refer to the year 2008 and our estimate prices for each of these. Now, in the past, we've done things similar to this, where we would have typed in equals and then put in a formula in this first cell. I'm going to show you another way to do this now that's a little easier. Um, so if in this gray column underneath new, type in equals. And notice how it automatically tells us that the new values are going to equal. Now we just have to tell well, what is what is it going to equal? We're going to take each value in column A, so I'm just going to type in A, times that 1.322. So 1.322. So when you get done typing that in, just hit enter. And if you notice, it's automatically tabulated that for us. And it stopped with our last digit that we needed here. So now we can see that uh, price of gasoline in 2008 would have increased to be uh, one point. For nine or dollar forty nine a gallon, where a ground of beef would be about two dollars and forty one cents a gallon, and so on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our mean, median, mode, all those items are, and we're going to be able to fill out that table. Then that should be in your notes. So to do that, I don't want to have a whole bunch of other numbers on this page, so I'm going to go to a new spreadsheet, and then we go to menu, statistics. Stat calculations, and we want the very first one, one variable statistics. Hit OK. Now we want it, this X1 list, we want that list to be referring to our old set of data. And so now you should have a screen that looks like this. And if we go back to our notes, what I want you to do now is I want you to take some time to fill in those different pieces that we have in our note sheet. So I want you to pause the video. I want you to figure out 
what the old statistics would be. So find the mean, the median, the range, the variance, the standard deviation. For the mean, by the way, you're going to use the x bar. For the range, that's where you have to take the maximum value minus the minimum value. The standard deviation we'll use as a sample size, so s of x. Now for the variance, you have to figure that out on your own as well. That's where we have to take and square the standard deviation. So go ahead, fill that out for our old statistics, and then do the whole process again, where you're going to follow these steps, where you're going to figure out what the um, statistics would be for the mean, median, range, variance, and standard deviation of our new values. And then I want you to fill out this last column. To fill out the last column, what you're going to do is you're going to take the old statistics and multiply by our skill factor, which is 1.322 and fill out those numbers. So again, you're taking the old statistics times 1.322, and then we'll compare those in a minute. So why don't you guys go ahead, pause the video, and hit play when you're ready to see if you have the same answers as I got. Okay, so these are the numbers you should have gotten in your table. Again, what you should have done in this last column is taking the old statistics, the 1.79 times 1.322, and you get approximately these values. And if you notice, these values are all the same as our new statistics were. However, the only thing that was different was the variance. So here's what we can conclude from this. If we multiply a set of numbers by a scale factor, in this case it was 1.322, the mean, the median, the range, the standard deviation, the interquartile range, all of those values are also multiplied by 1.322 to get our new statistics. But the variance is multiplied by something different. Now this can be summarized. If you want to copy down what's in this box, you can. Otherwise, this would be a better way to um, summarize it. So again, like I just said, when each, um, there's a typo there, when each value in a data set is multiplied by a value A, then these things are true. The mean, the median, the mode, the range, interquartile range, and standard deviation are all multiplied by A. The variance, however, is multiplied by A squared. So in other words, going back up to our previous information here, if you took 1.3 times 1.322 squared, you get approximately 2.28. So that is the best way to be able to come up with our new statistics. Was we can just, instead of having to go through that whole process, we can just multiply the that different values by whatever A was. With the exception of our variance, we just multiply by our original statistic there by A squared. So that pretty much summarizes uh, this set of notes right here. So again, make sure that you get that written down. Otherwise, you should now be able to, to, to uh, successfully complete your assignment. So with that, good luck.